thank you all panelists for doing those breakout sessions. We had a great session with Corey Maria and I'm sure the other sessions went really well. The focus of this last um, panel is for each panelist, they'll be speaking. Uh, some of them have indicated a question they wanna answer, but really on their uh, transition from high school into whatever they did next. And um, just to guys, give you guys a sense of you know, what that might look like for you, what to, things to think about, that kind of thing. So I'm actually going to start with Alex. She's probably, um, she's been in the work world for a little bit, and I think she's going to tackle several questions, um, <laughs> was my impression, and her main thing was buckle down and get it done. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, so some of, some of y'all who were in uh, the breakout session um, with me and Jake heard, uh, Heard me talk about an annual trip that I do to Mexico every year um, with my friends uh, Catherine Enns and Julia Holly, um, who are fellow uh, Steiner alums. And something that we were talking that we always um, just really get into all sorts of conversations. Um, but one of the things we were talking about um, this year a lot was was actually how we did or didn't feel that Steiner had prepared us for the real world. Um, and certainly in our class, um, there were a handful of people, a, a, a lot of people actually, that I felt like it took uh, took a couple of years for um, for everyone to sort of figure out what they were supposed to be doing, like what what the right um, career choices were or um, working environments were. Um, and we were talking about what that was. And I think sort of a, a mixed blessing of at least our time um, at Steiner, and I have to assume it's about the same, um, is that there is a lot of this this passion and um, an engagement um, that students have that we had with our education. Um, that's great. Um, it's really important. It makes it so much easier to learn when you actually care about what you're learning. Um, but there were definitely some classes that I had to take at, in college or projects um, that I had to work on in grad school um, or things that I just didn't want to do or didn't care about. Um, and and I, I'm not sure if I was prepared as well as I could have been to just, just do it, just get it done. Um, and that I think that can be either finding a way to care about it or finding a way to be okay with just kind of phoning it in sometimes. Um, one of my professors in grad school, we were um, graded on, um, on the scale of pass fail for the most part. Um, and one of my professors used to always say, P's get degrees. Um, and he, of course, wasn't telling us to slack off all the time, um, but sometimes just getting a project done um, so that you can move on to something else, something that you do care about, something that's more important with whatever, whatever, whatever method you are using to determine what is important and what isn't important um, is a really valuable skill because there's going to be a lot of stuff. There have been a lot of things in my life so far that I just haven't given a crap about um, or haven't wanted to do. And... The, the better you can be at just saying, you know what, I'm just going to jump through the hoop and I'm going to get it done um, will really serve you well and allow you to dedicate your energies on things that you do care about. So whether it's reading Moby Dick, um, the summer before 12th grade, <laughs> um, or writing a paper, just sometimes you just got to suck it up and get it done. I love that advice. That actually goes into adulthood. <laughs> yep. <laughs> sure does. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go next with uh, Jacob Nordin. He had um, talked a little bit about wanting to share what were the best resources he found um, for himself in the next steps. There we go. Um, in the next steps, I'm specifically thinking about uh, college and for you guys going into college and or a gap year, which we didn't talk about in our group, but that's a great thing. My sister did that, it's awesome, and I am 100% encouraging travel. Um, but resources for school, things, two things that I would say were very important for me were, first of all, I mean, I was only there for a year, my freshman year, but just going to, I mean, the orientation thing you're gonna have to go to probably, and it's, it's cringy. But any of the other groups or any of the other clubs or activities or anything, you got to remember that you're all there doing the exact same thing. Nobody knows anybody. And that's kind of the way to go meet people. And, 
you meet people and you're going to have a fun time. And I've met in that one year, two people that I'll probably stay in contact with the rest of my life. And just put yourself out there because everyone's in the same boat, you know? So I think everything that the college is doing, they're doing it because it works and you should take advantage of it. And second, I would say that my, uh, advisor for my classes and for everything and really any of the faculty there they're all there because they work there and it's their job and they chose to do that job and they want to be there so specifically your advisor and I've had I went to two different schools or three now actually and have had three different advisors and remembering that not that I'm an anxious person but just remembering that that person's there to serve you. Like that's their job is to show you in the right direction and show you the things that you like and make you have an amazing time. So utilize them as much as you can because that's what they're there for. And they wanna help you, they wanna see you succeed. So I was asking them all kinds of questions. Like, I mean, it doesn't have to be about school, but just email them. They just sit there on their computer all day. So you just email them and they hit you back and it's a really nice thing. So I would take advantage of that. Great. And Maria, I think you also were, there was something you wanted to mention similar to that. Yeah, I actually chose pretty much the same questions to answer. Um, <laughs> so for my transition, I also went, I went directly from high school into college. And at this point, I'm not entirely sure if that was the right decision, but it worked out well for me. Um, it's definitely not the right decision for everyone. And I do really want to say like college is not the right decision for everyone. My brother is an extremely successful carpenter and he does super well and he never went to college and he has a type of skill and intelligence that I never had and never will have. If you compare our woodworking projects from high school, they are vastly different in skill level. And we had had the same education in woodwork up until that point. Um, but what I want to say about, so, the resources that I found really helpful, um, make use of mental health services on campuses if you're feeling anxious or stressed out. Um, they, therapy usually is very cheap on campuses and you can get it really easily. And that was incredibly helpful to me when I had a really hard time my second year. Um, talk to your faculty. If they're not your advisor, if they're not in fields that you're interested in necessarily, but just talk to faculty. They have super interesting stories. I never took marine science courses. I went to a college that was right on the ocean, but I made great friends with a professor in the marine sciences. He teaches ornithology and things like that. And he's one of my best advisors and he kind of adopted me as an extra one of his advisees. And we have, I'm still in touch with him to this day. And I email him when I have great life philosophical problems. Um, I joined, I'd always wanted to take dance classes as a kid and I joined a dance club and I have great friends from that from my first year. Um, several of them were actually Waldorf kids from other schools. So I now have like a Waldorf network that is far outside of our school, which was amazing. Um, some of them had been on the main trip with other classes and suddenly new people from our school from way back in the day, which was really cool. Um, and then I think um, one of my biggest things was talking to people I didn't agree with. And I am a very passionate person when it comes to politics. I don't take disagreement lightly. I tend to get very loud when people disagree with me, not because I'm necessarily angry, but because I care a lot. Um, but one of the people I disagreed with most passionately got into the most crazy arguments with, I'm now gonna get married to next year. And we've slowly grown towards each other through the last seven years that we've known each other. Um, but he and I used to fight constantly during our first year in school. Um, and I learned so much about expanding my horizons through that um, because he had a totally different background from me. And so it was really interesting to learn his perspective and to, instead of disagreeing now, we kind of educate each other. Um, so talk to people you disagree with and people who are not interested in the same things as you because that matters. That's great advice. Um, Jacob Warren, how about you? Do you have anything to add? Kind of, I think, you know, with your music background, you had a pretty um, obvious passion that I remember in uh, middle school and high school. And just kind of your transition at the U of M and maybe, you know, what you found helpful for you in terms of what the school gave you and what that meant at U of M. Uh, yeah, I actually kind of want to echo 
Alex, Alex's advice, um, because that was really a big thing that I, I found out. Um, yeah, so I went into college. Um, I remember my first week, I had a music theory class, and I turned in a main lesson book page to my like college theory professor. And she was just kind of baffled at like, why did you do this? Like, what what is this thing? Um, and I, I sort of realized in that moment that like, I, 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 I was sort of conditioned to do that, but I was also doing it for myself um, because the topic that we had covered was something that was specifically interesting to me and that I wanted to put a lot of time into. Um, and quickly I began to realize, like Alex said, that there were a lot of topics that I really didn't care about. Um, and there were a lot of things that I had to do that were honestly a little bit pointless to what I wanted to do with my life. Um, and just accepting that and accepting that sometimes you're gonna procrastinate a paper and you're gonna write it at 4 a.m. And again, it's just get it done and just do it. Um, that, that sort of carried me through. And it's, it's hard because the first two years, and I, I'd imagine it's the same in most degree programs, the first two years are very generic um, and they're almost like weed out classes where you're in a big room, there are a lot of people, you have a lot of like random homework assignments and you just, you just have to do it. And I found that like the later my education went, the more specialized and the more I was able to take control of which classes I was taking um, and which professors I interacted with. And that's when, um, that's when things got a whole lot better for me as far as like learning. Not to say that they were bad the first couple of years, but you know, um, figuring out that you gain more control as time goes on and you understand more about yourself and what you want as time goes on. And just accepting that like, that especially that first year, you're not going to know what you want um, in most cases. Even though I had a passion, I still didn't know what I wanted. And yeah. Great. Um, how about you, Morgan? You um, are in academia now. And I also know you had quite a passion for chemistry. You actually, uh, I don't know if you had, I think you were a little, uh, you came into the high school a little later uh, then Sehan was there, then Sehan Ege, but um, maybe you can talk a little bit about um, your transition too. Yeah, so the thing that kind of surprised me was that um, college and high school are kind of opposites in how classes and homework works. Like, I mean, like normally you'd go to school for, you know, like six to eight hours, five days a week, and you'd have a couple of hours of homework in the evenings. Um, but when you go to college, you go to class for like a two to three hours a day and you do like six to eight hours of homework um, that particularly um, when you're taking like in your first year, if you're taking um, calculus and chemistry and physics like you do for most of the science and engineering degrees that you really have to be doing like three hours of homework for every hour of class time. And that's uh, that's a real adjustment. <laughs> Um, but it's also how you learn stuff because in this high school usually you know you'll talk about the same sort of topic multiple times and you'll like touch it again through doing your main lesson pages but in most college classes like they present the thing once and you have to come back to it yourself in order to like learn it deeply um, otherwise you only ever see it once and then it's on the exam and you're like I don't even remember talking about that ever so um, yeah, it's just, it's really, it's a very different balance of time in class and time working by yourself to get everything done. How long did it take you to figure that out? Um, well, I think most people find that their first semester is kind of rough. Um, and then your second semester, you've kind of figured out like, okay, this is how much time I need for this type of class. Um, and you also figure out um, like what, Alex was saying like which classes you just need to like power through despite not caring about them as much versus which ones you're actually going to kind of want to work on uh, and be able to like balance your time like that. Um, the other thing that took me a bit to adjust to was realizing that if I wanted to have art happen in my life, I had to make it happen now. Um, so I, I've been in um, community choirs uh, for most of the time since I graduated from Steiner because I really missed doing music, but I also didn't really have the time to practice enough to keep a string instrument going. But yeah, and also probably not class time, right? You couldn't take yeah. a class because you needed certain required classes. Yes. That's great advice. 
That's great. And then let's, um, how about you, Corey? Can you um, talk a little bit about your transition, your adjustment into the, uh, the program that you were in? Of course. So um, like some of the others had said, uh, my school was fairly different from the Waldorf education that I was used to. However, um, kind of what Jacob was touching on, my first class, no one knew each other, no one knew any of the teachers, and classes were very quick. And when I mean that, I mean they would be over in three weeks, boom, your subject was done. So you really didn't have a lot of time to get to know uh, professors or whatnot. And what really helped me was getting to know people, getting to know your professors, because like Jacob said, they're there to help you. They're there to make sure that the next generation succeeds. And because of that, because I was uh, friendly, you should say, to some of my professors, that really helped me through the school that had classes that I just was not familiar with the, um, the way that they were run, the way that they were taught. And I still call these people time to time to ask them questions because that's how good friends we've become. And this is professors I'm talking about. How, um, and uh, yeah, that's the, oh, I would say that's the biggest thing that's really helped me through that because they are a huge resource to you, whether you know it or not. Even the people who come from classes that there are classes that you absolutely do not want to be in, but you have to be in them because that's what it takes to get your diploma. And I know that everyone else talked about that, and that was certainly what I had to go through as well. So already explained, but yeah, I want to touch on that. Um, well, I um, it sounds like all of you have found that that in high school, the kind of relationships you had with your teachers, your high school teachers was much more personal than maybe some other kids that went to a public high school or a larger school. And that learning that skill has helped you as you went on to any other pursuit is that personal relationship with a teacher, a professor, a mentor that really um, helped open up avenues, created a network. Um, that's what I'm hearing from you. Does anybody want to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, that's true. Um, it's pretty silly to be afraid to ask a professor for help, um, whatever that means, even if, even if it is just having, a, not just, but even if um, whatever you need help with is maybe not actually relevant to, to the class. Um, you know, it's one thing if you're not understanding some of the material, there's no reason not to ask the professor, the teacher, the instructor, your boss, whoever, whoever it is, whether you're at college or not. Um, that's, that's what they do. That's what people are there for. Um, and more opinions are usually better. Um, that being said, even if you just need someone to talk to, um, you know, if you're not quite ready to go to mental health, although thank you so much, Maria, for mentioning that. Um, that's really important. And there's, there's no reason not to get help if you need it, even if it's just a quick check in with someone, um, you know, hey, I'm struggling with XYZ, you know, can we talk about it? Um, people Yeah. I'll say yeah. I needed I needed a friend to tell me to go to therapy. Um and to like go get help. She was like, This is not okay. You need to actually like go deal with this. Um and sometimes you have to be that friend to somebody else and sometimes somebody else is that friend for you. Um but faculty members can be that help and they can become friends as you grow in out of just a high school student's kind of relationship to a teacher where they are um, you can grow into becoming much more of an equal as you kind of grow into college and then grad school, you become equals with your professors and they can become really good class, just friends as well as mentors. Great. I think, uh, August, you have a question, but I didn't know who it was for. Oh, Alex, uh, the question was, sorry. Uh, why did you go decide to go into the work that you're doing right now? Um, 
So I guess it was through, um, you know, it took me four years of college to figure out exactly what it was in theater that was most interesting to me. Um, and then it took me another three years of grad school to figure out exactly, um, you know, both, uh, you've probably all seen those Venn diagrams of like what the world needs, what you're good at, what you enjoy and what pays the rent. Um, but um, I found that this, this job specifically um, as uh, my job title as account manager um, at Atomic was the, the perfect balance for me between what I'm good at um, and also what people will pay me to do. Um, I am good at talking to people. Um, I'm organized. Uh, I'm not afraid to have hard conversations. I don't mind being yelled. I don't like being yelled at, but I don't mind being yelled at um, by clients if that's what they need to do is just vent and then say, okay, great. How are we going to move forward? Um, and, uh, and I like being able to look at a project and be like that huge pirate ship or that huge um, shoebox, Nike shoebox that we made that's the size of a city block. Like that is really, really cool. Um, and uh, what, and I think another thing that, um, that I found uh, helpful when I was looking at going into commercial as opposed to going into theater is the variance in the types of projects that we work for. So if I'd gone into a theater company, most regional theater companies um, will do, you know, four, five, six, eight shows, whatever. And they all sort of run, they're approximately the same budget usually, although sometimes the musical is a little more expensive, um, you know, and they all, they start rehearsal here and they open the show here and then they close here and then you start the next one. Um, but one of the things that I really like um, about the kinds of projects that I'm doing now is that they are extremely different. Sometimes I'm working on a project that's, you know, a $2 million project and then simultaneously or right after that, I'm working on a $60,000 project um, and the timelines are different. So um, I don't feel like I'm, I get bored. Um, it's not like, oh, it's another, it's another show and you sort of go through the motions. It's like every project is really, really different. And there's certainly moments of like, well, this thing that I'm trying to figure out how much it's going to cost so I can tell the client, um, it's sort of like this thing that I, that we built two years ago. So I have that information and I'm always learning um, so that I can be quicker and more nimble. Um, but I, having that flexibility was really important to me to keep, to keep a, a sense of um, projects, you know, staying exciting and, and different. Great. Does that answer your question? I think okay. so. That was August. Um, I put in the chat if there were questions from anybody, but I can certainly ask some questions of the panelists. Um, Actually, what I'm kind of interested in, uh, about half of you are in the arts or have, you know, kind of pivoted to that. And I think generally speaking, sometimes people think, God, how can you really make a career in the arts? I mean, it just, um, and I think for Waldorf graduates, actually the statistics are about half are in, you know, the humanities and the arts and half are in the sciences. So be curious, maybe, um, Jacob, you can talk a little bit about that. Um, I know, anyway, what you've kind of done to launch yourself after this master's. The other Jacob? Oh, sorry, Jacob Warren. Yes. Sorry, I was, it wasn't letting me unmute. I think I'm good now though. Okay. Um, yeah, so we <laughs> talked about this a little bit in um, my breakout group, but I guess I'll just kind of reiterate it for everyone and maybe go a little bit deeper. Um, I think the biggest thing for making a career in the arts is that um, you have to realize that like no one, no one but you is going to make it happen. Um, I think one of the luxuries of having a, a job where you have a boss is that you have someone telling you what to do when you're doing an arts career. It's, it's all you all day um, kind of determining whether or not you succeed. So that's kind of the number one thing is like you have to, you have to come to grips with um, being your own boss and two, um, Diversify was the other big thing that I said. Um, if you want to make a career as um, a full-time artist, you need to do, you need to, you need to figure out what your art offers um, in many different areas. So, for example, for me, um, I have a couple of different main projects um, that I perform with. So, performing is a big um, area. Um, I am a recording artist, so I will do like just lay down bass for someone's album or um, that kind of thing. I'm a freelance musician um, in multiple genres. So I do, I play with orchestras. Um, I kind of play with folk musicians, jazz musicians, whoever needs me. Um, I'm a teacher. 
So I have a private studio. Um, I also help run a like strings program. So I'm an administrator. Um, and then sometimes I also do design work for other people because you know, whatever skills you're good at will come in handy. So it's, it's really to, to make a career in arts. I strongly believe it's, it's, you have to do everything you possibly can um, and, figure out, and figure out how to make it unique. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Jake Nardine? Um, I mean, you grew up with a family who did the arts. Yeah, I 100% agree with what he's saying for sure. And it's been that way my whole life watching my parents. They're the most driven people I've ever seen. Even during this quarantine, they're just sitting there on their computer grinding, marketing, and selling stuff and just getting the job done with like grind that I don't have yet. And I think that's a huge part of being an artist. And there's jobs like right now I'm working, I have a boss and I'm working under them. And I think of it more of like a craft style where I'm making product. There's not so much artistic aspect to it other than the colors that we're putting on. But for me, being younger than a couple of the people I've spoken in my career, um, I'm gathering information and I know that I want to run my own business someday and whether it's with glass, which has a large opportunity to be, um, or it's something else, I'm just gathering information. And I'm going to work. I know I'll work for somebody else after this for a while. And I've watched as much as I can for my parents and will continue to, but as an artist, I'm getting, preparing myself for that, for when I'm going to have the drive and for when I need to handle everything myself and gathering and just seeing how different people, like I said, I don't know if it was in the big group or if it was in the breakout group, but the people I'm working for are a husband and wife too, just like my parents. And there's a lot of similarities, but they run the business completely different. And so it's really, uh, it's cool to see from everywhere else I can. And when I go to this third shop, wherever it is, learn what I can from them and how they're working with their product and just gathering information so that I can do it myself. Yeah, no, that really is cool. Um, Morgan, maybe you could talk a little bit about um, kind of being in the sciences and your, you know, what is your next steps? You're working on your PhD right now. Yeah, so my next steps, um, I want to go into industrial research, um, work for a big chemical company, um, helping to make their workflows more efficient through computation. Um, and but I could from a PhD I could equally go into academia personally is not for me um, <laughs> I want to teach a lot um but yeah I'm just gonna get a job in industry somewhere yeah so that's what you want to kind of get into then yeah okay that's great um Maria maybe you can talk a little bit I, in our session you went into this a bit but um I think maybe you're having gone through a non-traditional education through Waldorf education and now kind of as a mainstream teacher, uh, seeing what kids are experiencing in school, in a public school, and maybe that perspective you can bring as a Waldorf, you know, graduate. Yeah, so, well, I wouldn't call my school necessarily traditional, we're considered. So if you're interested in this kind of kind of school, because it's a mental health facility, they're called level five schools in Maryland. So something along those lines. So it's a pretty, it's pretty much a fine line between a juvenile detention center and a school. Um, so as a Waldorf graduate, walking into a public school, um, it was a really big culture shock. Um, I really struggled with it at first, and I had the incredible opportunity in um, a couple of classes to where we talked about educational theorists that are used in public schools to ask, like, have you ever heard of Rudolf Steiner? And then really the answer was no. So I got to actually tell all of my professors, like, hey, there's this other cool guy whose um, traditions are a lot more gentle and student-centered than a lot of what we're being taught. And this is how I grew up, and this is why it worked for me. Um, and this is why I've seen it work for other people around me. Um, I chose my job. I um, had a couple of job offers at the end of the last school year. And I chose this school because it gave me the opportunity to be more responsive to my kids than I am in a normal classroom space. If I have 40 students sitting in front of me, I can't teach 40 different lessons at the same time. Um, 
And a lot of the time that's what's being asked of public school teachers because they're supposed to, they're, they're being asked to do two things at once, to individualize for every student while also raising all of their test scores on the same test. Um, that's an impossible job to do. I don't know how they do it, even though I was trying to do it for a year last year. Um, but my class, I have five to eight students and eight is too big for my classroom. Um, I, the most I've taught at the same time this school year is six. That was a lot, that was crazy. It ended up with a lot of less than pleasant experiences, including several desks being thrown. Um, that's not entirely unusual at my school, um, not to scare you all off, but there is a reality out here where a lot of students have incredibly difficult experiences and all of the research and trauma shows that it literally rewires your brain so that you end up having very different responses to what might seem like a minor offense to us. Um, so that was really hard to see, but I get to do creative projects. I let my kids color in class sometimes and it's perfectly valid. And my principal is never gonna get mad at me for saying, hey, today we couldn't do work, so we're drawing a picture that's kind of related to our work. And she goes, that's great, you're still doing stuff. Yeah, So that's great. Well, I know we're just a few minutes over our end time. Um, I'd love to be able to keep going if some people want to stay on. I think we can chat a little bit to Corey too, but um, if you have something else to do or um, need to go somewhere, definitely do that. But I want to thank all the panelists for coming today. And I'd say overall a great um, success to do this online and actually bring more people in than we thought we could because, you know, everybody's home right now. Um, so thank you, you guys. Um, I hope everybody found something useful, some useful nuggets. We recorded every breakout session. Hopefully that'll work out and we can share those with everyone afterwards. Uh, so thank you. I'm I'd not like going to end the session right now. Yeah, Jacob. I'd just like to say thank you before everyone leaves to these guys that organized it because it was super simple and I'm no tech whiz, but I just hit the button and logged on and Ash did a great job moderating us and it went really smooth. Great, good, thank you. I think we'll keep it up. Maybe we'll do some with real, just alums and alums. <laughs> good, um, so if anybody wants to stay on, we can hear a little more from Corey too, or otherwise, thanks everyone. Bye.